Hi and welcome to a 3D print tech design. My name is Anton Monson and today I'm going to show you how you can save your filament for under 30 bucks. Back a few years ago I started to talk about moisture in filaments and I made a video trying to investigate like the issues of it and it was actually really good but had some technical flaws. What it did was that it really illustrated the reasons why you want to keep your filament dry. But since it's been a few years and there's a lot of new people in the industry, I want to kind of renew that video. If you want to check that out, you can always do that down below. So basically, moisture can build up into your filament depending on how you store it. And that really affects how your printer behaves or actually how the 3D model looks. Usually it will print pretty fine anyways, but the result and the finish of the filament is, is, uh, is much worse. So for example, when the moisture that is bound inside the filament starts to boil, it starts to push out of the extruder when you don't want it to. So you end up with extra extrusion, with some stringing, with a lot of different issues that can uh, make you think that it's your printer that's bad, when it's actually just the filament that has been stored inappropriately or manufactured wrongly. So often when you do print with a moist filament, you often see some really like blobby prints. Uh, it's all less sharp uh, and it also, you can see at retractions and coasting and extrudent starts that you have some issues with, uh, with how the filament looks and how the layers on the model behave. So often you can have variations in layers because the moisture is irregular. So you, you push out filament when you don't want to. So the best way to avoid that kind of issues is of course to store your filament in some sort of sealed box or bag and keep some silica gel inside that to keep it dried. You can even do like Thomas Sanlatera does and build yourself a really nice box with uh, PET if the tubes coming out of it so you can always keep your filament stored. But that's, that's a good solution if you if you don't want to get into this problem. And if you're more chaotic neutral like I am, I tend to store all my filament spools like this, which is a really bad idea, but I do it. And over the years, the filaments have experienced different moves. They have been in sub-zero temperatures and moving trucks and all that. So I really need to save my materials. So what I need to do is to really restore all of my filament spools to make sure that I can print really well and make sure that any reviews and stuff that I do is not depending on bad filament and actually about the machine. And to restore your filaments, you need one of these bad boys. This is originally a fruit dryer. It's made to dry like fruits and mushrooms and stuff that you find in a forest. But basically what this does is that it heats up air and circulates that air inside of a closed chamber. And over time that air will actually extract the moisture from the filament. It's a pretty slow process, but it, it seems to work really, really well. So I'd much rather do this kind of drying than a, like a kitchen oven that some people do because kitchen ovens are not made to control lower temperatures. And remember, many of these filaments has to be dried at like 50 or 60 degrees Celsius. And yeah, sometimes people forget their spools in their kitchen ovens and you can see like how this guy did on Reddit and it does not look good. This is not how you dry your filament spool. So although there are many versions of these fruit dryers out there um, and you can use my affiliate links down below if you want to buy one. There are a few things that you have to consider when you're picking one up. So the first thing that I think is really important is that you have a variable temperature control. So some filaments like PLA requires less uh, heat and temperature to dry um, and some require much more like nylon and advanced materials needs a little bit more temperatures to, to behave well. Remember some materials actually anneal at like 50, 60 degrees. So if you put them in here on the spool, they will get annealed and they might be harder to print with. So a variable temperature is really important and also make sure it does not have a timer. I mean, 60 minutes or sometimes 90 minutes that the, the timer ones have is really a short time to dry filaments. Usually you need something like one to three or even four hours to dry a spool. Now the timer, it's not an exact science. I don't have all the answers like how long to dry stuff, but usually if you Google around, you'll find some good material on how long to dry stuff. Also make sure you go for a round version. It's much easier, it's much more efficient in space. And you also want to go with something that is much bigger than your spool. So with this spool, for example, you can see that I have a lot of clearance for air moving around. So when I put it inside, we have both clearance on top, but also around the spool. And speaking about clearance, one of the issues is that these are made for drying fruits, not filaments. 
So all the trays have patterns like these and, and basically all you have to do is to cut them out. So you can use a Dremel if you have that or like just take one of these caterpillars and start clipping. It's gonna take a while but you can get it all done. Also if you can't find the right height there are some people that actually print like extensions so you can build it up and, and make sure that you can even dry several spools at once which is really nice. So for me, this is really a lifesaver. I've been using a different version before, but it was time to renew one. This one was at Jula here in Norway for like 200 to 300 kroners. So I picked one up. But if you want to see some other ones, you can check the links down below. But I use them to keep basically recover spools that I have left unopened. And although I should like get a rep box or something to keep my filament spools dry during printing, this is the best I'm gonna go for now. Hopefully in the future I might be able to like just drill some holes and add some filament spools out there so you can have a spooling mechanism inside and keep the filament dry and drying it while printing. But if you're unsure if you need a filament spool, basically if you print with ABS, some more technical materials like nylon, uh, polycarbonate, PVA, um, I would suggest that you actually get a dryer because it's really important and affects the printing a lot. Uh, basically with nylon that is a hydroscopic material so it absorbs moisture and you can actually ruin a spool by the time that you're, you're finishing your prints. So yeah it's really important and it saves a lot of your spools and basically as I said before I use this to recover bad spools. I don't always dry them before printing. If I have a new spool I'll just unload that and print but then when I forget it in the box for like a few months then I, I dry it up and, and then it's easy to use again. So if you want to check out more of like how it looks and all of that when you do a bad print and a good print I have some good links down below to my website where I did a large article about all this but also to the video um, previous on my channel where you can see how I like test it how I tried to do it scientifically and, and you'll see the results of a dry and a bad filament so I recommend you to check that out and if nothing else, make sure you stay subscribed because next week we have another video about something else. See you guys. Have a good one. Bye.